This is uh, some of the shots I took out at uh, New Cypress Lake recently. And as you can see with this camera, sometimes you get this reddish glow, which I made the video from, and sometimes you get this black and white. And I want to work on this image right here, so I'm going to open it up in camera raw. Now, I've already worked on this, but I want to show you, this is the original file, so what I do is I go down here and I'll make a snapshot, and I'll label it zero if this is the first image, the original file, and I always like to save the original file, and I have that in zero, then if I start working on it, I'll add another snapshot, so at this point in time, I'm going to go to the second snapshot and I'll work with this one here. You know, let's see if I, this one here I really don't need because I don't think I've changed anything. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Alright, so this is the one I'm going to be working on. What I do first is I go to my presets. This is an Adobe Camera Raw. I do all my work on Adobe Camera Raw, and then I go into Photoshop. So I have a, it's actually a, a file that I set up that desaturated. What it basically is, is you're going into this scale here, and you, I've cracked everything down. Everything is at minus 100%, so there's no color in the saturation here. So that, and then I saved that as a preset. So that's the preset I have to make it go black and white. Next I'll work on lens correction and then I'll enable that. And this was shot with a Canon 5D Mark II and I filmed with the same camera for the video. And I just do that to enable the correction and set up the default. And there's what it was shot at 28, it's a 1.8 lens. Next stage is I go over here to the well, this is where you do most of your color changing, set your exposure. Now, it may look a little muddy right now, but I have another technique that I'm going to be working on later on in this uh, demonstration. Basically, the only thing I do is I may adjust the exposure a little bit, but I go to the clarity and then I increase the clarity, usually about 30% or 30 points. And that's all I do in this area. Next thing I'll do is I'll open up the image. Now this is the image in Photoshop. Let's get it full screen. And I'm looking at the image here, and the first thing I see is something on the sensor here. As you can see, there's some dirt. So what I want to do here is I want to get rid of this, and I do it this way. I use this uh, selection tool, circle the spot, and if you push the shift key, you can circle as many spots as you see at once. So there's another one there. Now let's see if there's any more. I don't see anything right there. You need to blow up your image so you can see what's going on here. This is something right in here. If you know, it's probably hard to see on the screen, but I can see it when I move it. So I'm going to select that one too. Hit the shift key and select it. All right, now what I want to do is I want to fill these images or these dust spots with content aware. And it'll take care of that right there. You won't see it anymore. So that's my way of cleaning up. And here's another one. So 
نقول الله تعالى Let's try this here. Right there. I didn't get this one quite as good, so. Get it? Fill content oil. And I'll deselect and see if I can see anything. Nope, it's gone. Okay, so now what I want to do is go back to the full screen. And there's a, well, you would call it a script, but this is something I set up as an automation in Photoshop. And it's based on Scott Kelby's seven step process. He does it for color images, but I use it because I like what it does for these infrared images. And I also don't like color hazes. I like to go straight to black and white. There are people who make it and swap the channels and do all that stuff to make it surreal. I don't want it surreal in that regard. I want it surreal in the image itself, not being affected by the color. So what I'm going to do next here is, so before I do that, I want to, I usually go in here and I, you can go through your noise here in Photoshop, but I have this uh, collection that I got free. And it's just a noise reduction filter. And it's working. And you can see by looking at the lupe over there, or the loop, whatever you call it. And I'm going to just click on this, go by the standard of it. You know, it's getting rid of whatever noise there is. I have a fast process in doing this stuff. A lot of people spend a lot of time, but I have it down to where it doesn't take me long to do these images. So now what I want to do is I want to save this. I'm going to save it as a TIFF file. And I'm going to call it a, you know, let's see. Blue Cypress, I know that's the lake, and then I save the image file. But I also go in here and I put RT, capital letters, let me know that it's been retouched. That's just my system. And I don't compress it. So there we go, there's the image. And a lot of people won't do this, but I do. I just flatten it because I know I'm working on something that I'm going to be the end product. If I want to go back, I can go back to the Adobe Camera Raw and work on it again. Now, next thing I'll do is I'll check to see if the horizon, if you're shooting on a lake, you need to have your horizon straight, most cases. And I bring this down to the horizon on the lake, and it's pretty close, so I'm not going to mess with it. All right, so now here's the important part. I'm going to go through here, I'm going to do my, I have a hot key that I'll press and it'll go through the actions. And as you can see, it's processing right now. And in a second here, you're going to see what this, no, right there, are you, that could be a finished product if you wanted. I mean, you could probably retouch this out of there and retouch that out of there. You know, if you wanted to get rid of stuff like that, you could. But I'm not showing you that. I'm just showing you my process. And the next thing is, I like to make a duplicate layer. And this is like adding a, a gradient filter. And I hit the multiply. And you go, ooh, too much. But no, I'm going to go up here. On the top layer, I just made a mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and paint with light. Now, I have my color set at black. Here's my paintbrush. And I'm going to pump this all the way up to 100 because it's going to work real fast. This area here is way too dark for me. So, we could actually do this real quick, but I'll just pump this up a little bit here. There. OK. 
Okay, so I'm painting back into the picture the stuff that I want to have bright. So that takes care of that real quick. And if you want to see what's going on, you go over here, click on the mask, and hit the Alt key. And that's just what I painted. So there's some spots I missed there, but actually that could be a big nation. I'll paint it out for now, and I'll tell you what, show you what I'm talking about. All right, so go back and click on the main photo. And you see how bright this is? Now this is dark up here, and the sky is nice and black. I like black skies. But this here is too dark compared to what I want to do. So what I want to do now is I reduce the opacity of this. And I'm going to leave the brush the same size for now. This is a soft end edge brush too, by the way. See the harness is turned all the way down. So there's a nice ring around the outside. So what I want to do now is I'm just tapping on it keyboard here, I mean tapping on my mouse, bringing in the areas quickly, I hope you, you can see what's going on, you bring them back to normal, now that shadow there is not going to come back too much, but if I want to just work on this one here, and then you can go up into the sky here a little bit, right in that cloud, so I swipe across real quick. Now, let's say you want to make something that's, you want to darken something. Well, you go to the white, click on the mask, and I'm going to do a big nation over here. Oops, got to be in the white. You're getting darker there, darker there, and this may be a little too bright or distracting in the front, so I'll paint across like that. And let's see if there's any other areas that you want to darken. Well, at this point, I like what I see. I'm going to show you what it looks like where I painted. There's your painting, and you can change the flow and change the opacity and, and work on certain areas, and you can make your brush way smaller if you want it to get really into the minute areas, let's say over here. I want to lighten this up. Well, I think it already is as light as it can go. <coughs> Just to show you, see that there? I'm painting with light. I'm going to back up and undo that. So there you go. That's uh, how quick it is to do infrared photography by converting it into uh, what I do is desaturate it, make it black and white. And infrared anything that's green that has the sunlight shining on it, it's going to turn white and skies go blue or go black if you have the nice clouds they'll stand out real nice but that's the technique now i could get rid of this weed right here which kind of is distracting and kind of wonder what's going on here and you could do that by the content aware but you'd have to flatten this image here first so i'll flatten it I'm going to go over here and content aware of this thing. You can move this around a little bit. And hit fill, content aware. And see what happens. There it goes. And so it's not so distracting. And then just deselect it. And there's a little pieces of weeds floating here but this is just a demonstration to show you how I work on my infrared photography using camera raw and then into Photoshop with a uh, script that Scott Kelby showed me how to do years ago it's 
basically the seven step process and he has a book out on that. So I hope you learned something from this and uh, thank you for watching.